Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Myself Chirag. In this video, I am going to discuss about introduction of GNUSIM8085 assembly language tutorial. So now let's check the outline of this video. The first topic is registers in GNUSIM8085. Then the next one is decimal to hex, hex to decimal conversion. The third one is how to store data in input output ports. The fourth one is how to store data in memory. The fifth one is general menu and sidebar. And the last one is why GNU SIM 8085. So without wasting time, let's start with the first point. Registers in GNU SIM 8085. The highlighted box shows the different registers in the GNU SIM 8085. So first of all, zoom this highlighted box. So these all registers are used in 8085 microprocessor programming. For the better understanding of register, I have divided this register in three different categories. The first category is the general purpose register. The second one is flag register. And the third one is special register. Here we can say flag register is also a special kind of registers. So let's discuss all the categories in detail one by one. The first one is general purpose register. In 8085 microprocessor, there are six general purpose registers. The first one is B then C, D, E, H and L. So this all six register are stored 8 bits data at a time during the execution of program. So now there is one question arise in my mind. How can I store 16 bits data in registers? To store 16 bits data in the register, I have make a pair of register like B, C, D, E and H, L. This pair of register, it stores 16 bits data at a time during the execution of program. So these all are the general purpose registers. So the purpose of this register are to store the data temporarily during the execution of program. So now moves to the next category. The next category is flag register. So this highlighted box shows the flag bits, not a flag register. So now this is the flag register structure. It stores the 8-bit data at a time during the execution of program. The first flag is sign flag. After execution of arithmetic or logical operation, D7 bit indicates the sign flag. Now see in this flag register. If the D7 bit is set to 1, it means D7 bit is 1. It shows the negative number and D7 bit is set to 0. It shows the positive number. The next flag is 0 flag. So here in flag register, D6 bit indicates the 0 flag. If the result of the operation in ALU is 0, then 0 flag is set. And flag is resets if the result is non-zero. The next flag is auxiliary carry. In flag register, fourth bit shows the auxiliary carry flag. This flag is used for the BCD operation. The next flag is parity flag. In flag register, second bit shows the parity flag. So parity defined by the number of ones present in the accumulator. After arithmetic or logical operation, if the result has an even number of ones, it means even parity. So whenever even parity is generated at that time, the flag is set to 1. If the parity is odd, then flag is reset. And the last flag is carry flag. In flag register, 0th bit indicates the carry flag. Carry flag serves as a carry in addition and borrow in subtraction. It means when carry or borrow is generated, at that time carry flag is set. So in flag register, bit number 1, 3 and 5 are not defined. Flag register is also called as special register. Now move to the next categories. The next category is special register. In special register categories, the first register is A. A means accumulator. It stores the 8 bits data at a time. It is special register because most of the instructions are directly working with accumulator in microprocessor 8085. The next register is PSW. PSW stands for program status word. It stores the 16 bits data at a time. PSW is a combination of 8-bit flag registers and 8-bit accumulator contents. Mostly it is used to perform stack operation. The next register is PC. PC stands for program counter. It stores the 16 bits data at a time. The purpose of program counter is to store the memory address of the next instruction to be executed in the program. Next register is SP. SP stands for stack pointer. It stores the 16 bits data at a time. So stack pointer holds the address of the element which is top of the stack. And the last one is interrupt register. It is not defined by the GNUSIM8085. It stores the 8-bit data at a time. So this is all about the 
registers. Next topic is decimal to hex and hex to decimal conversion in GNU SIM 8085. So now this highlighted box shows the decimal to hex and hex to decimal conversion. So let's check in the simulator how it works. So if I enter the decimal value uh, like it is 15, we all know that. So what is the hex value of 15 decimal? It is F. So now see over here, it is the F. For hex to decimal, I have entered a value A. Now convert into decimal value, it is 10. So this portion shows the decimal to hex and hex to decimal conversion. So decimal to hex and hex to decimal conversion is very important because we all know that whenever we write a 8085 microprocessor program at that time all the value are given in the hexadecimal format. So at that time decimal to hex and hex to decimal conversion are required. The next topic is how to store data in input output ports in GNU SIM 8085. So now using this highlighted box I have entered a value on the particular port number. So in this box there are two fields. The first field is port address and the second field is value. So in port address I have entered a port number and in value field I have stored a value on particular port address. For example I want to store a value 20 on port number 50. So first of all I will enter the port number it is 50. On the port number 50 I want to store a value 20. So now update the port value. Now go to the right hand side sidebar, click on the IO ports. So here enter the port address, it is 50 and OK. So now it shows the value 20 is stored on the IO port 50. So the next topic is how to store the data in memory in GNU SIM 8085. So this highlighted box shows the memory. So first field in the memory is memory address and the second field is value. So now let's check into the GNU SIM 8085. For example, I want to store a value 15 on memory address 2000. So first of all, in the first box, I have entered the memory address, it is 2000. In the next box, I have entered the value, it is 15. So now update the memory. So now go to the right hand sidebar and click on the memory. And now enter the memory address, it is 2000. Now click OK and it shows the value 15 it is stored on the memory address 2000. So this is the process how to store a data on particular memory address. The next topic is general menu and sidebar in GNU SIM 8085. So this highlighted red box shows the general menu of GNU SIM 8085. So this highlighted blue color box shows the right hand sidebar of GNU SIM 8085. And I have already discussed the left hand sidebar of GNU SIM 805. So let's discuss this menu and sidebar in GNU SIM 8085 simulator. The first menu in GNU SIM 8085 is file. It is common menu like in other softwares like new, open, save, save as, print, font and the quit buttons. The next menu in GNU SIM 805 is reset. Using the reset menu, we can reset registers, flag, IO ports, memory. Using the reset all button in one click, we have cleared register, flex, IO ports and memory. The next menu is assembler. So in assembler, the first button is assemble the program and the second one is execute the program. In assembler, the third button is show listing. Show listing provides the hexadecimal opcode of the program. Hexadecimal opcode can be used to run the program on actual hardware. The next menu is debug. In debug, step in, step over and step out. This makes code debugging easy by analyzing the register and memory content in each step during the execution of program. In debug menu, next button is breakpoints. Breakpoints temporarily pause the execution of program so you can decide what to do. Using the toggle breakpoint, you can add the breakpoint. And using the clear all breakpoints, all the breakpoints are clear. And the last button is stop execution of the program. The next menu is help. In help, the first submenu is contents. When you click on contents, it opens the GitHub. It provides the basic user documentation of GNU SIM 8085. The next submenu is assembler tutorial. Using assembler tutorial, you can learn how to write a program in GNU SIM 8085. It explained with example. And the last submenu is about. About shows the detail of GNU SIM 8085. Then after, these all symbols are the quick access of the menu. 
Now discuss about right hand sidebar. In right hand sidebar, the first tab is data. This tab lets you inspect values of various variables defined in the program. The next tab is step. This tab lets you inspect the values at various stack locations. The next tab is keypad. It provides easy way to insert assembly instruction in case the syntax of an instruction is not known. Also using the mouse hover on the particular instruction, you can know about the instruction. The next two tabs, memory and IO ports, we have already discussed. And we already discussed left hand sidebar. The next topic is why GNU SIM 8085. So we all know that there are many microprocessor simulators are there. But why GNU SIM 8085? So I have discussed few points. The first one is GNU SIM provides the graphical simulator, assembler and debugger. The next point is it supports to the Windows and Linux. The next code editor, next hexadecimal to decimal converter and vice versa. The next one is keypad. The next one is registers. The next one is flex. The next is update port and memory values. This all features on a single screen. And the last one is heavy program execute within a few seconds. So these are the some reasons GNU SIM 8085 is better than other simulators. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and share with others. And subscribe my channel on YouTube Chirak Balodia. If you have any query, you can ask me in comment section. Thank you for watching this video. We will meet in next video of the assembly language tutorial. Bye bye.